different ways you could go about publishing the service. And this first method, I'm going to be showing you how to publish directly to your server through ArcMap. Now, depending on your permissions, you might not be able to take this method, which is why I'm also going to showcase another method, which actually creates a file that has all this information in it that you can hand off to your ARC server or IT administrators so they could publish. And I'm going to show you both those methods. But again, I'm going to start with publishing directly to the server from ARC map. So within the file menu, once again, you want to go to Share As and go to Service. Hey, Anna. Yes? We had a uh, question um, related to uh, whether or not you need to signify uh, relative uh, paths before you publish. And, um, we have our data set up in an SDE um, database, so we do not um, I do not need to check that off, but you may want to check that box here. If, if you're publishing um, data that's in a file geodatabase and you're moving that file geodatabase out to the server so that the service can read the data, the data has to live on the server, the server somewhere. So if your data is in a file geodatabase, not an SDE that's already on the server, you might want to check this, but this is actually more related to packaging maps for other users. So if you wanted, if I wanted to hand off this map to you with all these layers in it and all this configuration information, I could say store store the path name and say OK. And then when you go to File, Share as Map Package, it will package everything up, including the data. And then once once you hand off that map package to someone, they can open it up and all the connections will already be made. So you, you won't have any broken, broken data links here, the red exclamation points that come up. Thank you. So going back to sharing the service, once this dialog comes up, we're just going to walk through publishing a service. So we're going to leave this radio checked and click Next. You want to choose your data connection. So this is where you would, um, this is your server connection. If you do not have one that already exists, you can add it in here. And just stepping through this wizard, you want to publish GIS services, you say Next. Right here, you would copy in your REST URL and then type in any authentic authentication information that you need to access the server, username and password, and click Finish. Now that will be saved for the next time that you go through and publish services. So usually you only have to do this on your first go around. So this is the server I want to publish to, and this is the map name that I'm going to use. So you can change this here as well if you so desire. And click Next. And then within the server, it's asking you what, which folder do you want to store the service in. So I have a folder already created, Marine Cadaster, but if you wanted to create a new folder, you could do that here as well. But I'm just going to work within the, my Marine Cadaster folder, and I'm going to say continue. This will then bring up the service editor dialog. And in here, you can configure even more settings for your service. So I'm going to step through all the settings on the left, and then we'll eventually get to these icons up on the top right. For the General tab, we tend to keep all the defaults. Within the parameters information, two things you might want to look at changing here are the anti-aliasing. If you set these to be on, this will just allow your lines within your data or your annotation to not appear jagged. It actually smooths out the lines. So we like to actually change that. And we also sometimes, depending on the service and how popular it is and 
the data that is contained in the service, we sometimes up this maximum number of records returned by the server. And we found that 100,000 is a bit too high and poorly impacts the performance of the service um, by drawing slow if that's set too high. But we've come to the happy number of 10,000 for services that we know contain data that have lots of features in it. And what this will do is if somebody brings in this individual layer from the service into, say, RTS.com, it will actually draw 10,000 features rather than 1,000 features. And we feel it gives our users a much more complete picture of the data than just the 1,000 feature default. Now, of course, if you know your data does not contain more than 1,000 features, you do not need to worry about changing that number. So moving on, we'll go into the capabilities. And here, you'll see all the different options that you can provide for your users. Um, WCS, the web covered service, um, web mapping service, um, web feature service that are all OGC compliant. You can also provide feature access, which is an Esri um, type of feature service. And there's other options as well. Here at the Office for Coastal Management, we try to enable WMS on all of our service, services. And you know, if you're interested or curious in seeing what any of these other options are that I'm not going to go over today, I encourage you to check out the um, Esri site. They have lots of useful information pertaining to what each and every one of these are. And, and the different settings that come up once you check these off. So you can see once I select an option, I have more settings that I can set up over here. I'm going to uncheck that. So again, mapping is always enabled because it's a map service. KML is also enabled by default, and we also enable WMS. Now going, moving, continuing down and moving into mapping, within this tab you can see all the operations that are allowed. You can check these off if you don't want your users to have access to the data, the map, or the query. But we leave this all on. And also, depending on your map service and what you want your users to be allowed to do with it, you could check this option on as well. Allow per request modification of the layer order and symbology. This is also known as dynamic layers. Once you have this checked, you have to go in and manage your workspaces. So you want to go in and add your data store. So you can see these are the different options. I'm connected to an enterprise database, so I am selecting that. I'm going to give it a name. This is just some of our terminology that we use in-house. And I'm going to navigate to that data store. This is our SDE connection. You want to make sure that you're pointing your users to a database that does not have write permissions, because having this enabled would actually allow them to, if the database has write permissions, would allow them to get in there and write to the database, delete from the database. This is a read-only database. So we double check that we're connected to the read-only database, and we also lock the version. And of course, it, it gives you an explanation of what, what you're doing here, preventing unauthorized access is what I just explained, and then you can also read more about it as well in, in, in this link. I'm going to press OK and OK here, and continue to move down. So within the WMS portion, you'll see all the operations that are, you are allowed to check on and off. This is new as of 10.3. If you, for some reason, wanted to check some of these off, you'll need to know that you need to keep on the Git, Git capabilities and the Git map for the WMS to function properly. We also go through and provide useful information here as well. But for this demo, I'll just type in a couple things. But we actually have standard terminology that we put throughout this whole thing, just meta information about who they can contact if they have questions about the service. In the KML tab, we leave the defaults. And we also leave the defaults within the pooling tab. If you're an SBE 
our ARC server administrator or an IT administrator, this might be something that you can consider changing. Um, if, if you're just a user and you're wanting to publish a service, you might want to just discuss changing these settings with your IT administrators. This is not a um, map, like a, what is it called, web map processing, a geoprocessing service. So I'm not I'm not going to um, change anything here as well. I've I've never I've always left the defaults on this tab. And if you were interested in caching your service, all the settings for that would be set up through this dialog. You would uncheck this right check this rail that would uncheck the dynamic um, service, and then you'd have all the options available to you to go in and and set up your cache, and you can calculate your size, and you can go into the advanced settings and um, configure it even further. For the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to be going over those settings. Finally, you want to get into the item description. All this information carries over from your map document properties. You can add even more information in here if you want. Um, for instance, we have no access and use constraints, and I'm also going to check this box. Um, now, since you're publishing direct to the ser server, you have this option of sharing. This allows you, if you're signed into RGS.com, to, to put the item into your content and also share it with the public. So if you wanted your map service to be found on AGOL, this would be one way to do that. Um, I'm not going to step through this today. 